Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday evening. Welcome, welcome. As usual, I <laughs> I thought I was giving myself enough time to be ready, and I am still getting set up, but here we go. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is Patrick, your friendly neighborhood shaman, and we are going to do our shamanathon. So how this works is, if you haven't seen, this is I think the third one I've done. We are going to do, it's an open donation, um, readings and healings and teachings, oh my. If you would like, um, my, I have my uh, PayPal and Venmo pinned to the top of the comments here in a tip jar. And if you would like to get a reading, you can donate any, oh God, I need to, I, just one second, I need to ground. Let's all take a breath. Let's take another breath, breathe dip, take a deep breath in. Hold it for a moment, let it go. When you breathe in, when you inhale, visualize the energy of Mother Earth coming up to your heart, up through your chakras into your heart. Earth up. And then when you exhale, imagine the sky medicine, energy of the sky coming down into your heart. Sky down. Earth up. Sky down. Earth up. Sky down. Ah, hello. <laughs> and welcome everyone to my third installation of the Shamanathon. 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 And yes, I am that much of a dork. So, I'm also Patrick, your friendly neighborhood shaman. Um, forgive me here, I'm, I'm still in the process of getting set up. And awesome. So, I have a couple people who have prepaid that are first on the list. And if you would like to, to take part, um, I have my PayPal and my Venmo te uh, pinned to the top of the comments. And you can, it's like an open donation, so you can give anything you want from a dollar to hundreds of dollars, whatever you feel like. Um, this is about reciprocity and I have my skills and training to give and you can help me paying my bills and my my groceries etc etc so and and it, it is the job of a shaman to support the community who supports him it's like this beautiful reciprocity um, a shaman is someone who walks with a foot in both worlds and um, okay I guess we're doing a, a, a short little <laughs> lesson on what a shaman is what shamanism is shamanism is the oldest known spiritual practice um, it arose globally everywhere at the same time in almost every culture and so the shaman is the one uh, before modern civilization, the shaman was the psychiatrist, the doctor, the pharmacist, 
the counselor, all of those things wrapped into one. Um, the spiritual leader, the one, like I said, the, the shaman walks with a foot in both worlds. So the shaman is a bridge between the physical realm and the spiritual realm. And that is what I am coming here tonight to help with, to play that role, to be the, not the intermediary. It's like my job is to empower you. My job is not to be the priest that, oh yes, you have permission to do this or that. My job is to help you connect to your own wisdom, to your own guidance. And so the way this works is anyone that donates um, whatever amount, they get either a reading, a healing, or a teaching. Um, and at the default is a reading. If someone doesn't specify what they want, um, we'll go to a reading and I do medicine card readings with the medicine card deck, working with the totem animals, um, getting the wisdom of the, the animal spirit guides, and the readings are, there'll be a three card reading. So, I'm talking really fast. I think I'm a little nervous. It's interesting. Um, but thank you again for joining me. Like I said, I've done this twice before and it's been a lot of fun. I got the fire going in the fireplace behind me. I'm just gonna hang out. And anyone who donates gets a reading or a healing or a teaching. Oh, and, um, so if you don't wanna, if you would, you also have the choice of, besides the reading, you can get a healing or a teaching. Um, if you want a healing, I will do like a five minute shamanic Reiki session with you. Um, and actually, if someone wants to do that, it's a benefit to everyone because I, 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 it will not be, definitely not like soul retrieval level healing. Um, because doing this in public on the, on Facebook, uh, I can't specialize because there's other people watching, but I can do this general well-being kind of energetic support, um, soothing, whatever you need in that way. And that way, also those who are watching, you know, you can be watching without contributing financially and still benefit so so that's what we're doing um, I'm still I'm just trying to get everything up here I'm getting my laptop up so I can tell when people actually send in a donation so again my donations uh the my links are at the top of the comments the tip jar um and so let me see where my list went do, do, do. la 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 I am really unorganized. I thought I was giving myself enough time to get ready tonight, but thank you for your patience. And as you can tell, I am really not very good at multitasking, so. Okay, we have
Anna, Melissa, Anna again, and Tammy. Yay. So, make sure that I've got everyone so far. I don't want to miss anybody. And thank you guys so much. Thank you for donating. You guys are so generous. I appreciate you so much. Awesome. So our first, I'm, I think everyone is just doing readings. Yeah. All right. So our first, first person is Anna. And Anna actually has two different things. So I'm going to do them in the order. So I, so I don't miss anyone if I don't, and I don't screw it up. I'm going to do it in order of contributions received. And so Anna, this is your first one. It is, you wanted a, um, this will be the general one. You want it had a, a one for a general well-being, general overview of what's going on. So we'll do that one first. And then the second one will be about your specific question. All right. All right, Anna, the three cards that came up, let's see if I can do this. You got lizard in reverse, ant in reverse, and salmon in reverse. Um, and again, like I always tell people that come to me for reading, Reverse is not bad. Even if all of them are a reverse, there is no such thing as a bad reading. Um, and most of the time, when cards are in reverse in my readings, it, it's more a sense of um, like a seed that's been planted that hasn't yet blossomed. So that said, let's see here. And so I do the three card readings um, and I kind of feel in to each, each one is different. Um, sometimes it's like a past, present, future thing. Sometimes, most of the time, it turns out to be kind of a mental, mental, emotional, and then kind of the center, what the main message is. Um, and that's what I'm thinking here. So we have lizard in reverse, kind of in that. If, if anyone has ever had one of my readings, like a full reading, and you know I do it kind of that cross pattern, which is the medicine wheel. And so each card is a different direction. And this is basically doing that middle like east, center, west. So lizard, you have lizard in reverse, and that's in the, the east, which is air, so the mental realm, the um, more masculine side. And lizard is about dreaming. Lizard is... realizing yourself as the dreamer. It's, it's remembering that how do I put it? You are the instigator of your life. You are the center of your life. You are the dreamer. Life might be a dream but you are the dreamer that is dreaming it. You know, if you think about it Creator 
is the dream, the dreamer, the big dreamer, and we're each a little, we are each a facet of that divine. Um, our purpose really is to make known the unknown. We are, we are a piece of creator coming into these various multiverse of experiences and worlds and such to experience every possible path, every possible reality that there is. And so we are the dreamers that are creating our own experiences here in the bigger illusion of life. Does that make sense? Um, and so what that means is that there is nothing, nothing is ever going to happen to you that is beyond what you can handle. Um, you are, you are the one who sets the frequency of your life. And what you experience in your life is dependent upon where you're sitting in that frequency, right? Um, like when we talk about creating your own reality, we're not talking about, we're not like Bob Ross doing a painting saying, and a little tree lives here, and a little rock lives here. You're not... You're not orchestrating every particular detail of your life, but you are setting the vibration up <clears throat> to resonate with the feelings that you want. Who do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to experience? And then that cre the universe creator fills in the blanks of what will bring that feeling to you, what will, what resonates with where you are. And so with Lizard in the reverse, um, let me give you an example. Um, I was on a little personal retreat one time. I'm out in the woods somewhere. This little, um, it was in a campground, but I had never been there before. And out in the woods, and there weren't anyone, there wasn't anyone else around me. And I'm out doing my pipe ceremony in the middle of the night, in the, in the dark. And I heard a little bit of rustling off in the underbrush somewhere. <coughs> and first of all, then I, I, first I'm like, oh crap, no, I'm in the dark. I'm in this strange place, and there's nobody around. What if it's a bear or a cougar or something? And then I realized that I am the dreamer of the dream and that not like I am, I am doing my work. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Like I say, you're always in the right place at the right time. Um, and there are no accidents. So number one, Chances are that Russell is not a cougar or a bear because that would be counterproductive to where I was and what I was doing. On the other hand, if it did turn out to be a cougar or a bear and it attacked me, that is like a major, major change in life, right? That's like, that's like your life taking a right turn and like I said, there are no accidents. So if something were, something that big were to happen, there would be purpose to it. And so in either case, I could just chill the heck out and just relax. And because whatever it is, is meant to be, and I can handle it. I feel like I'm really not explaining things well tonight. Um, in the book that that goes with the cards, there's a story about Lizard. Now, he was just out in the sun, basking on this rock one day, eyes closed, just soaking it in. And Coyote saw him sitting there. And Coyote comes up and is like, hey, what you doing? What you doing? And Lizard was like, I'm dreaming. 
And the coyote, oh, you're napping, you're sleeping? And lizard was like, no, I'm dreaming. And coyote's like, well, what's the difference? And lizard is like, sleeping is unconscious. I am consciously dreaming. I am visualizing. I am creating my reality. And Coyote goes, well, how do you know I'm not hungry and I'm going to eat you? And Lizard said, because I dreamt you already and I dreamt you with a full belly. And so, again, it's like that intuitive connection to all things. It's like Lizard didn't, knew he didn't have to run because he dreamt of, of Coyote with a full belly that he could trust the dream. He can trust that we live in a friendly universe and everything that happens, happens for our benefit. Um, that the universe conspires for our, our greatest good and benefit. Um, and so when you realize all of that, and you realize that you are the dreamer, then you realize you are unlimited. This is about dream, like in reverse, lizard is about, can be, it can be about dreaming small, just thinking, not thinking big picture. You're just thinking about next step and next step and next step. And um, it's time to, so it's time to take the initiative and really think and visualize what it is you want to find. Who do you want to be come a year, five years, ten years from now? And really, you know, it could be vision boarding. Um, could be doing meditations every day and, you know, setting some time aside every day to, to just sit in the feeling of wholeness. Sit in the feeling of what you want to do, like explore your passions, explore your desires. Who did you want to be when you grow up? Um, and believe those dreams, believe those desires. Um, you can't have, those desires are gifts from the universe. And the universe is not going to give you those passions or those desires without giving you the resources by which to make them come true. So dream big. Know that that you are the creative force in your life, that it's you who sets the vibration, the frequency where you sit. And every time you raise that frequency, better things come. Some things are gonna leave, it can be chaotic as well. When we, when we level up, Everything that can't match that that frequency is going to fall away. It's going to fall apart. And so it's not that it's going to be easy, easy and smooth necessarily. But when you realize that you're the dreamer, there's nothing that can happen that cannot be shifted. It's like... like Everything is malleable. Everything is figure outable, right? And no matter where you are right now, you can get to where you're going. There is always a way, okay? So dream big. Um, in the West, we've got salmon in reverse. And Anna, this is for you if you're watching. I, I saw you just come on a little bit ago, so I'm not sure if you realized that this was your reading. This is the general reading. So you had lizard in kind of the mental area. You got salmon in the emotional realm in reverse. And salmon is about getting home. When salmon shows up, it is a promise. It is a guarantee that you are going to get where you're going. That nothing can hold you back. And it's interesting these two working together because, um, like I said, lizard, you're the dreamer. You're setting the frequency of your life, and that determines what you what you experience in your life 
who shows up, what situations open. And Salmon comes along to remind you that you're, no matter what happens, you're going to get home. And so rather than having to, to be afraid of what lies around the next bend of the river, it's an adventure because you know whatever is ahead of you, you are going to get through. In fact, whatever is ahead of you is a stepping stone to where you're going. Hi, Kiyosha. How are you? It's good to see you. Glad you could make it. Um, and so, in reverse, you know, salmon have that compass within them. They know exactly where they're headed. They have the directions within them. And they also have the vision of their path ahead. They, they're not always just fighting the current. They're not just, got to get home, got to get home, got to get home. They have an enthusiasm for getting, for arriving at home that carries them through, um, that gives them the energy and the strength and the gumption to go upstream, right? And besides that, they, they ride the currents of um, the undercurrents that actually go reverse of the flow, that have um, the whirlpools, etc. Those are the those are the actual channels that they follow. And so, in other words, trust your vision, trust your path. You see better than anyone else where you're going. Um, and it does uh, it. <laughs> The thing is, when you start to follow your path, there are going to be those who are like, where the heck is she going? Where is she going? She's going backwards, and people are going to think you're going backwards. They're going to think you're going crazy. Um, but like Nietzsche said, um, how, how does that thing go? That There's a the famous quote by Nietzsche that Those who were seen dancing were thought crazy by those who could not hear the music, right? So, pay, like, trust, trust yourself, trust your vibration. No one else has to approve of it. No one else has to even like it. But don't, don't sacrifice what you know. Don't sacrifice your vision and your knowingness of who you can be, of what you can accomplish for the sake of somebody else's comfort. Trust your vision. Trust what you know. Um, I'm going to pull my camera closer so I can put it in so I don't lose you. Oh, hold on. There we go. Awesome. All right, and so that's kind of and so that and that's in the the West, which is more the emotional realm, the water, um, and so, like I said, salmon has that unerring compass within them to know where they're headed, which way is home. So in reverse, it can be kind of, it's like the compass isn't, compass might be spinning a little or you might not trust. It's like, wait, I thought that was north, but it's saying that that's north, right? Um, so there might be some feelings of, of lostness, of disorientation right now, <coughs> but know that I just, I just read this poem today and it was something about what do I do when I'm lost? And it was like, stand still. When you're lost in the woods, the trees and the bushes around you are not lost. They know exactly where they are. 
and you are exactly where you are, which is called here. And listen to the trees, they know where you are. That kind of thing. It's like stillness, like relax, center yourself. Don't depend on the, the, the opinions of others to tell you where you're supposed to go. Only you know what's best for you, okay? Um, and then in the center you have ant in reverse. And ant is about patience. It's like everybody's favorite card in the whole deck. Hurry up and give me some patience. I want some patience right now. Um, so overall, all, between all three of these, Ant kind of is the one that cements these together and says that what you are experiencing is a process. This isn't... This isn't a math program. Uh, a math problem where you're trying to solve something and this equals that and the whole point is to get to the answer. You're in a process of growing. You're in a process of going home which is basically experiencing who you are. Claiming your own power. Claiming your authenticity of who you have always been, right? Returning to your origins, returning to that divine light within you. And there's no end to that. When you're in this lifetime, that never ends. We never stop learning because we're constantly creating. We're on the edge of creation. And we're constantly creating new new things, new experiences as we go. There is no destination out there waiting for us to discover it. We are creating it as we go. And so, all of these are, are hinting at slowing down centering yourself. You're exactly where you need to be right here, right now. There's no place else that you can be. And, you know, your only responsibility, the responsibility of this tiny little ant is to carry this tiny little leaf back to the ant hill. But there are billions of other ants all carrying a tiny piece of leaf. And in that way, by each each ant doing just what their responsibility is, the entire ant hill gets fed, right? Um, part of these, of figuring out what you want to create and trusting that you can get there, is taking everyone else off your back. You're stronger than most people, emotionally, spiritually, but when we are stronger than others in that way, we tend to carry others. We tend to carry more than what is our responsibility, right? And so it's like, put down everybody else. And I'm not talking, I know you're a mom. I'm not talking about just ignoring your kids, say, okay, you're on your own kind of thing. Because as a mother, part of that responsibility that you're carrying is to nurture your children, etc. But as far as like adults go, as far as traditions, customs, expectations of society, those are all things that get in your way. Those are the things that you need to take off of your back so that you can, you can really go in the direction you need to go to be fulfilled in this life. That is your only responsibility in life, is to become your highest possible version of yourself in any moment, okay? So believe in yourself. Know that you can, you can create 
any life that you want. Dream big. This is like, this is setting that intention, setting the destination in the cosmic GPS system. And then this is about trusting every little step. Okay, go five blocks and turn left. Go through that light and then turn right. Baby steps. Baby steps. And before you know it, you're going to look back and realize how far you've come in a very little time. Okay? All right. I hope that helps. And our next person is Melissa. Hi, Melissa. I don't know if you're watching this or if you're going to watch it later. But... Let me pull some cards for you. And welcome to anyone coming in later. What we are doing is my Shamanathon. Shamanathon. And if you're interested in getting a three card reading or a five minute healing or a teaching, I don't know if I actually explained that before, but if you have any burning questions about shamanism or spirituality or spirit guides or death or the afterlife or whatever you might have, you can also ask that as um, for whatever you contribute to get a reading, a teaching or a healing. And now we are pulling cards for Melissa. Okay. So, Melissa, your three cards are Grouse, and then Swan in Reverse, and Hummingbird in Reverse. So you have our fine feathered friends. You got lots of wings, lots of feathers, lots of air. Um, actually, was, okay, this is really interesting. So... You've got grouse, which is more of a kind of earth bird. They're, they're not real flyers. I mean, they can fly, but they tend to be ground feeders. You've got swan, who is a waterfowl. And you've got hummingbird, who's the epitome of an air, that, uh, you know, air constantly on the wing. So that's really interesting, kind of the balance of that, all of those things together. Um, so the way that I'm reading this, so if we look at it as like the masculine, well, the masculine and the feminine and then the center On the masculine side, the mental realm, thoughts, beliefs, or action, that's where you have grouse. And grouse is the spiral dancer. Um, they actually dance in circles and spirals. And the spiral is the one of the oldest known sacred uh, symbols that we have, right? Because everything exists in a spiral. Everything. That, that Fibonacci, is that what it's called? The golden mean, that, that spiral. Everything exists with that spiral. From seashells to storms to galaxies and down to our DNA. So it's that spiral dance that connects us to all things. It's that part that, that ties us to all things. And yet... Um, 
it's not like we're just homogenized into everything else. That what what Grell celebrates is your unique your unique frequency within that bigger orchestra. It's like Grell's drum. They they drum their wings, um, which is really cool when you're out in the woods and they're drumming. Um, because it's, it's more, you feel it more than you actually hear it. And that's exactly what it is, is that heartbeat, right? <clears throat> and so it's like your unique marching to the drum of your, to the beat of your own drum within the bigger, bigger um, context of the universe. You're tied, connected to everything, the web of life, right? but you exist in a particular place at a particular frequency. Like if we think of the universe as a giant orchestra, right? And creator is the conductor. And that heartbeat, your heart is what connects you to creator. And your heart is what connects you to all living things. And so if you're living from your heart, you are watching the conductor of the orchestra so that you are playing your own unique instrument, your own unique part, and you're automatically in harmony with everyone else. Um, and so what... So what I'm guessing, what, I, what I'm sensing is that you know, mentally, you have, you know who you are. You know what, what, what drives you. You know what turns you on. You know what your passions are, who you want to be. Um, and that is like from the last reading we did. It's like, that's the first step. This is the putting that frequency out into the universe. Um, and then if we move to the next card, Hummingbird in reverse and, and like the emotional, feminine, more being this rather than active action, you have Hummingbird. And the way I read that is that the reason it's, it's, it's not reversed because you're doing something wrong it's in reverse because you're just now setting, setting course, right? You're setting out on your ship on the, onto the, the great blue sea headed for treasure and adventure, right? And this is the treasure you're, you're looking for. Hummingbird is joy. <laughs> and so it's like you have you have the structure, you have the ship built, and it's just a matter of, how do I put that? You have the structure, you've got the mental structure built, you can see it. Now it's a matter of embodying that, rather than just staying in your head you know, we stay in our head, we tend to judge everything. Is this the right way? Is this the right way? Is that the wrong way? What's going on over here? And we're constantly up here. Your, your brain um, separates things. Your brain is what helps us discern between what is us and what isn't us, what's a threat and what is not. Um, it's what helps us keep from walking into walls, right? Um, but we can't live just up here. And so this is about, you have your belief systems, you can see it, you can almost taste it. Now it's a matter of applying those beliefs. Living your life as though what you believe is true. Does that make sense? Um, 
it's kind of like the fool card in the tarot. It's that stepping off that cliff, that that leap of faith. It's like, okay, I've been, I have been growing, I have been learning, I've been studying my entire life. Um, I have this whole set of beliefs. I know how the universe works. I know how how manifesting works. I know, you know, who my spirit guides are or whatever. Now it's time to bring that into the heart, to actually apply that, to embody that, and to become that in the physical realm. Because that is where you can't find joy up here. Your brain cannot find joy. Only your heart can feel. Just like they say, you can't think your, you can't think your way to enlightenment. Because you're in your head. The only way you can find enlightenment is in your heart. So that's what... It's kind of like... Ha! <laughs> my guys just gave me this image of a coloring book. You have the coloring book. You've drawn all the lines. You've discerned between what is solid and what is space. And now your job is to start coloring it in. It's a beautiful drawing, black and white, and now it's time to bring color in. Does that make sense to you? You know, and Hummingbird is dropping all of the pretenses, dropping all of the baggage, dropping all the heaviness, which allows them to have the freedom. They're basically a gyroscope, right? They, they are just, they can go in any direction. They can zip, they can go slow, they can hover, they can fly backwards. They're one of the only animals that can fly backwards. And so by dropping all of the crap, um, all of the baggage, all of the things that don't suit you, like, Using another analogy that's been coming up for me a lot lately, it's like you're a hot air balloon, right? And that hot air balloon just wants to soar. It wants to fly. Its natural propensity is to rise, just like your soul. But if you have too many sandbags on the side of it or you're still tethered to the earth, it's not going to go anywhere. It's beautiful, Right? And you got the flames lighting up the colors of the balloon. But the balloon isn't meant to just sit on the ground. Its purpose is to fly. And so it's time to kind of examine what is it that keeps you earthbound? What is it that keeps your soul from flying? Um, It might be situations, it might be people. Um, it might be beliefs. You know, you believe who you can be. You believe in the dance of the universe, but you've never actually experienced it, right? And it's time to, to cut those tethers, right? Cut the tethers. That are holding you back. Let go of, like, the habits that kind of keep us going in the hamster wheel, that keep us spinning our wheels rather than going forward, right? Um, and so that could be, you know, it's like, it could be habits that we do, like spending too much time spacing out in front of t the TV or something. Or it can be those little thoughts of, of um, self-doubt or, or unworthiness, right? But guess what? All of those things, those aren't yours. Those are things that the world, that, that parents or authorities or teachers or friends, etc., put on you and you believed them. 
And so it's time to examine those and drop those sandbags, cut those tethers and let your soul rise because you're meant to shine, right? Swan is... Swan is the epitome of the ugly duckling, right? <clears throat> you probably spent your life feeling like you didn't belong. Why am I here? What's wrong with me? Because I'm different from all these other people around me. Um, and so you've had to struggle and you've had to create your own beliefs and your own knowledge of who you are, your own wisdom of who you are. And so you, you, have, you have grown in ways that other people aren't even aware that that possibility exists, right? Um, because your destiny is before you. This is who you are meant to be. This is your full, this is you stepping into your power, your full potential. Right? And it's only in reverse because you're not there yet. But this is your destiny. This is where you're headed. Right? To be this brilliant, angelic bird that everyone inspires to be. It's like you are meant to be seen. You are meant to inspire. And with that, it's like everything, you have never took a misstep. You've never done anything wrong. Anything you have experienced has brought you wisdom. Each thing you have experienced is another feather growing on your wings, right? And so allow yourself to enjoy your life. The purpose of life is not just to build the structure and just to survive. The purpose of life is joy. It's to experience what it's like to live, to be present in this world, to enjoy what you do and to do what you enjoy. This is your compass. Like Joseph Campbell used to talk about following your bliss. Um, you follow the joy and that's how you get here because like Abraham Hicks talks about um, the path the path of joy is the path of least resistance your path is before you and it might be a struggle if for anyone else but you but this is your unique path the things your your unique talents and gifts or custom suited for you becoming who you are authentically. And so you can, when it feels good, like, okay, another thing, Martha Beck talks about the, the shackles on and the shackles off feeling. If something feels like the shackles are on, going on, if you feel less than, if you feel powerless, if you feel like there's something over your head, that thought or action or whatever it is, is basically a no, or that is wrong. But if it feels like the shackles are coming off, you feel a little bit of upliftment, lightness, that's a yes, that is, um, that is the right way to go. And that is your compass. And only you can determine that. Because we each have a different path and no one can tell you what is right for you other than your heart, okay? But again, this is your destiny. This is your destination. This is where you're headed. And so um, part of Swan Medicine is surrendering. Surrendering to your path. Allow yourself to be drawn forward by the joy. Rather than efforting, trying, you know, pushing. Your path is unfolding before you. Like one of my favorite prayers is, you know, open the way before me. That's what this is. 
it's meant to be joyful, right? And joy doesn't preclude hardship or challenge. You know, growth is challenging. Getting here, note like the people you know that are are really present, that are strong, um, that are calm, that seem to have everything together, they didn't get that way because their life was smooth. Those are the people who have had the hardest lives, who have had to contend with the hardest challenges. But it's, it's like, like um, the stones on the, on the seashore, right? The ones that are, are smooth from all of the rolling and the waves crashing and, and being rolled against the other rocks and stones. If they get smoothed out and that's what's what's happening you're having all all of the challenges in your life how do I put this it's funny because I just start talking and these words come out of my mouth before my brain has time to um, decipher them and then I'm like oh crap well I don't know if I I should say it that way but um, When we, when we experience the, the challenges in life that we experience, it's not, it's not the universe attacking us, trying to make us, you know, humiliate us, put us in our place. Those challenges are actually trying to remove our armor, to reveal that being of light that is within us, okay? I hope that makes sense. I hope that is helpful. But you're you are well on your way. You have a lot of great things looking to look forward to. You've got joy. Joy is your is your fuel and this is your destiny. Okay? Whew. All right, so Anna, you are next. I thought I would do this in the evening instead of the morning like I had been doing because I thought, hey, maybe more people can tune in, etc. Um, but I'm finding I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little more tired now than I would be. When I do it in the morning, I can always take a nap afterwards. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Okay. That's your first card, Anna. So Anna, you, you actually contrib made two contributions. So the first one was the general reading. This one has to do with a specific question. All right, so the specific question, whatever that is, I don't know what that question is, but um, you got hummingbird in reverse, blue heron, and bear in reverse. So Basically, this is not a time, this is not a time for action. This is not a time to try to fix something. This is a time of introspection. Um, going inward. It might be a great time for some journaling, figuring out what is it about life that brings you joy. And I know this is very similar, actually, to um, the earlier one for you. No, Kiyosha, you can 
you can send in a, in a donation right now and still get on. Um, there's only one more person. Actually, let me check my, my email real quick to see if anyone else has come on. No, you're, we only have one more person after this and then, and then it's you, Kiyoshi, if you want to, you want to donate right now. Awesome. All right, back to Anna. So, you've got these two cards on the sides in reverse, right? And then you've got Heron in the middle, standing tall. Um, it's about grace. It's about stillness. Kind of like what I was just saying that I wish I had that. Maybe I can find that poem. Because it seems to be applicable to a lot of what's being said tonight. Give me a moment here. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Here. So this poem, it, it's a Northwest Native American tradition translated by David Wagoner. And the poem goes, What do I do when I'm lost in the forest? Stand still. The trees ahead and bushes beside you are not lost. Wherever you are is called here. You must, you must treat it as a powerful stranger. Must ask permission to know it and to be known. The forest breathes. Listen, it answers. I have made this place around you. If you leave it, you may come back again. Saying here, no two trees are the same to raven. No two branches are the same to wren. If what a tree or a bush, if what a tree or a bush does is lost on you, you are surely lost. Stand still. The forest knows where you are. You must let it find you. I just I like I, I heard that this morning. It was like Oh my God, that is so profound. It just really, really got me. And that's kind of like, if you're feeling lost, stand still. You're right where you're supposed to be. You know, ask the spirits of the place, whether it's a physical place or the emotional place, or the mental place you're at, ask your spirits, where am I? What is this place? And allow, just like Heron, that allows the fish to come to him, what you need will come to you. Okay. Melissa, I see you just popped on a little bit ago. I just finished your reading just before you popped on. So I don't know if you were watching before and it just told me now that you're watching. But um, I just finished. <laughs> I hope that you, you might have to watch it once I finish and post this to my Facebook page. But, um, so Anna, the time, it's time to just, is to go within yourself. Don't think about, don't think about what anyone else is thinking or feeling. Don't think about how this is going to affect anyone else, okay? This is your compass, joy. S um, seeking out the sweet spots in life, right? Dropping, dropping the heaviness, the opinions of others. Um, <laughs> Kiyosha, I got you down. Awesome, thank you. Um, Like I said earlier, it's your heart that connects you to Creator, and it's your heart that connects you to all of humanity. 
And so to figure out, you know, we have a tendency to try to figure out, okay, if I do this, this person's going to react in this way and it's going to affect this person this way. And this person's going to have to do something different. And so we get, we pull in all this extra stuff that, that doesn't apply. That's what's keeping you from the joy. That's the heaviness that is keeping hummingbird from flying, from finding that joy. <laughs> and it's time to go within yourself and ask your own heart because your heart being the part that connects you to all people, all beings, creator. Your heart, if your heart feel, if, if, if a certain answer, if a certain direction, a certain action feels good to your heart, that is all the authority you need. Because that action or answer or whatever it is, is automatically in harmony for the highest benefit of everybody. You don't have to go around asking everyone else how they feel or what they think of something because it's all right here. And your heart will guide you in the direction, the highest benefit for all beings. Nothing can be for your benefit and be to the detriment of someone else. Right? Nothing can be to the betterment of someone else and be to your detriment. As we all get better, we all get better. And so if it's for your highest good, and, and you know, others may not have the eyes or the receptive um, sense to see it as beneficial, right? But It's if you are raising your frequency, if you are standing in your power, in alignment, head in the sky, feet on the earth, that, that hollow bone, that pillar of strength, that pillar of light, then nothing you do can be to the detriment of anyone else. And, you know, others may rail against you. Mothers, others may get angry. Others may disown you, whatever. That's fine because you are raising, like I said earlier, was, was that? Yeah, that was your, your earlier reading with, with Lizard in reverse. It's like you are the one who sets the frequency of your life. So you are the one who determines what is attracted into your life, whether it's people or situations. And if you raise your frequency, if you follow your heart and go somewhere that others can't follow, that's their lesson. Because they can't vibe at your frequency up here because they're just here. Which means they may have to leave. Now, they may they may somehow find the gumption to raise their frequency and meet you up here, but that's not for you to determine. You are to determine your own frequency, set your own power, your own connection to spirit. And allow, it's like, be the eye of the storm. Let the, let the storm rage around you. Let things fall into place where they're meant to go. And if others fall away from you, it's opening up a space for the people who belong in your life to enter. You know, if we keep hanging on to these other people or situations that are a lower vibration, that are holding us down from flying, then there's no space for better people, better situations, higher ways of being, of entering into your life. Um, so this is a time of sleep, dreaming, like you got lizards on the earlier reading, the dreamer. 
bear sits in the in in the den in the dark dreaming so this is a time of inner creation this is not a time of outer action it's a time of of dreaming of visualizing um journaling making like vision boards whatever you do to help you to kind of set that destination in the cosmic gps to remind you of your own power and where you're headed and then to surrender to it okay now besides those three cards as i was shuffling a card jumped out and it felt like it was not part of those three, like it's separate. And so you have one more card in this reading. <laughs> the one that jumped out was dog. Self-love. Loyalty to yourself. This embodies everything I was just saying. Um, Like by loving yourself, prioritizing your own well-being, your wholeness, what makes you up, that's how you attract to you your pack, your tribe, those that you attract to you people who are also whole unto themselves, which means that your connection is deeper, it's more mutually beneficial because there's no power struggle there's no codependence and because they are whole you can trust them to not have ulterior motives that when you really when you feel at your lowest and you need someone to lean on you can trust them to hold that space not to not to give you their power or to try to fix you but for them to reflect back to you to help you remember your own power of who you truly are, not the temporary forgetting of who you are. And so, to thine own self be true. Trust your heart, be loyal to your heart, because when you're true to yourself, you are true to all others. And when you're true to yourself, and you claim that power, and you claim your greatness, you're giving others permission to find their own greatness. Whether it's in this lifetime or the next one, you're planting seeds, um, which people may not be ready to receive them right now, but eventually those seeds will grow. And so your only concern is you being the best and highest version of yourself that you can in any moment, okay? And giving yourself the grace to be who you are and allowing all those good things to come to you. Don't chase what you want. Don't chase what you need. It will come to you as a reflection, um, as a resonance to the frequency that you are holding, okay? I hope that answers your question. I don't know what that question was, but I hope that that is helpful. All right, Tammy. Thank you guys for everyone who is donating. Let me check my email again real quick to make sure that I'm keeping my list up to date and current. Awesome. All right. Where is my... I had my water bottle here. My throat's getting a little dry. Oh, okay. Hold on one second. Un momentito. I need a drink. All right. All right, Tammy. 
Let's see what the cards have to say. So, for anyone that's come in, come in late and wondering what the heck is going on, welcome to my third, I guess it's become monthly, uh, Shamanathon. Dee, 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 dee. Shamanathon. Dee, 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 dee. Shamanathon. I just realized a few months ago that um, well, at the time I I didn't have rent money and I'm like, what am I going to do? I didn't want to be like, please donate to me. Please, you know, begging for money, begging, you know. And I realized I have skills, I have wisdom, I have training, I have things to offer in exchange for money. And so let's do this, this beautiful event of reciprocity. And people can donate whatever they want to donate. And I will do a reading or a healing or a teaching for them. And that way it is mutually beneficial. We, everybody wins. So that's what we're doing now. I have my PayPal and Venmo pinned to the top of the comments there in the tip jar. And if you would like a three card reading or a five minute Reiki healing or any question you have about shamanism, spirituality answered, you can donate anything, any amount. And I will help you out as best I can. All right, Tammy. All right. So Tammy, the three cards that came up for you are Beaver, Bat in reverse, and Deer in reverse. Um, so whenever Bat comes up in a reading, I tend to go there first because this is, that is rebirth. And I know you're laughing right now because I know what you've been going through. Um, but that is rebirth. Um, when that shows up, it's like dark night of the soul type things. Um, not necessarily that I mean, not every single death and rebirth has to be a big, major death and rebirth. I think this is something that has been going on for quite some time. Um, it's like a slow motion dismemberment. And for those who don't know what dismemberment is, in, in shamanism, um, sometimes we... We either ask for a dismemberment, we journey and ask our guides for a dismemberment or our guides might spontaneously dismember us and that is what it sounds like, but it's not painful, it's not bloody, it's not, it's like in the journey, our guides will, will kind of tear us apart and then put us back together stronger than we were. And part of the lesson is to realize who we are. Even when we, even when we're doing meditation or shamanic journey or whatever, we still have some form of image. You know, we, we go into there and we still have some form of body that we can touch, um, feel things or whatever. And so when our guides dismember us and take that away and we're still there, it's like one more level up of realizing your true identity, your true beingness outside the image. And I always, I always think of it in terms of the transporter on Star Trek. You know, it's like you go into the transporter and it breaks you down molecular, molecularly and then it, it 
reassembles you someplace else from the molecules up, right? And, and the transporter itself has filters so that when they then beam you back up to the ship, there are filters that filter out different diseases or different ailments, different things like that. And so it really is like breaking you down and then putting you back together stronger than you were before, filtering out anything that doesn't belong. Um, and so right now you're in the midst of that, that slow motion dismemberment. And it's like everything that was solid ground before is questionable as to whether it can can support you, can carry your weight. Everything is shaking up. And so like that, with your feet in the ceiling, rather than, than grounding downward to the earth, um, it's time to ground upward to spirit. Just like a dismemberment, it's like the physical aspects of who you thought you were, your identity, what you associated with, is falling away. And the only thing left is that essential spirit of who you are, right? And whew, I know it's not easy. I, you know, I always try to put things in the best terms and make it sound good, but that's not to take away from when we're in those places of, of shifts and darkness and, and pain, um, it's not always easy to feel that, to be aware of that, you know, it's like, oh yeah, this is all for my own good, Psh, whatever. You know, but, but if nothing else, this card tells you that there is purpose behind it all, that there is, there is going to come a point where you're going to look back and realize that everything that you may not ever want to go through again, what you just went through, but you will find the value and the worth of all of it because the outcome will be worth every moment that you went through to get there. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, at the same time, you know, this is in reverse. And so normally it, I think it's like, it's, it's someone that's going through all these changes and is digging their feet and resisting the change. But the fact that you have beaver here as well, um, I think offsets that. And I think the reason that is in reverse is because you're on the upswing, right? Beaver is, is the builder. This I think is in reverse because you've, I think you've kind of, hit the bottom, you know, of the hero's journey. Um, it's like that wheel, you come home, it's like you just pass that bottom point down here and you're back on the upswing. Things are starting to build. There still may be some things falling apart, some pain and, and personal growth that isn't comfortable. But for the most part, you are on the mend. Um, and things are maybe starting, starting to make a little more sense than they have in the past. Um, you know, Beaver is a visionary. Oh, awesome. You, yeah, you haven't been able to ground because there's nothing to ground to because your whole physical world is shifting and changing. So, yeah. And the other thing about all of that is that the darkness that you're finding yourself in is helping to heighten your intuition and your other senses, your 
um, extra senses, right? Your intuition, your vision, your sensing truth, feeling. And, and you're starting, your world is starting to rebuild itself. And, you know, Beaver is a visionary. Beaver see like when Beaver sees trees and bushes, etc., he doesn't just see what them as they are, but he sees what can be done. He sees the future. He's a visionary. He can see them as the resource to a better a better solution. And so it's like things are starting to make sense maybe. Maybe just starting to like It might be still in a shambles, but you're starting to organize things. You're starting to put things together and and actually build from all the broken pieces to recreate the mosaic of your life. Um, and the thing of the other thing about Beaver is their greatest accomplishment isn't the dam. Their greatest accomplishment is the lodge. They build a lodge that is anchored in the earth, so total stability. And it rises through the water, through the, the currents and the waves and the ups and downs of the watery world and rises above it and is a shelter. It's, it's a fortress. It's a place of, in the middle of the wet, cold, topsy-turvy world, it is a place of stability. It is a place of warmth. It is a place of love. It is a shelter. And That is the true purpose of this storm that took down everything else. And it's like making way, like I was saying earlier, if you're holding on to the old things and nothing changes, then there's no room for something better to come in. And so we have to let go of the old, lower vibrational things from where we were in order to make a space for the things that are better for us. And what I think is happening is letting go, um, awesome, it makes sense to you, I'm, I'm glad it resonates. The thing is, is that I think what is happening here between these two cards, I'm getting chills just thinking of it. Prior to this, it was external validation that was your stability, that told you who you were, told you you were safe, told you where to seek safety, told you, you know, was your foundation. And because it was all external things, as you are growing and learning more of who you are, those outside structures had to fall away because they can't possibly, it's, they're not true. They're a reflection of who you are. They are not the truth of who you are. Does that make sense? And so the illusion, the reflection had to go in order for you to become that stability and that structure and that power, the safety, the shelter. You are your salvation. There is nothing outside of you that can save you. And so those structures, those structures, that scaffolding supported you for so long and it had its purpose and it did help you get to where you're going. But it couldn't, it, it, it served its purpose. And at some point, 
it could only hold you back. Because if you're focused on the external structure, then you're never actually arriving to yourself. Does that make sense? Um, and so as the stuff outside you is falling apart, that was your identity, that was your stability, you're becoming the structure within, you're becoming the lodge. You're becoming the place of stability and warmth and safety. Um, that is awesome, that is beautiful. So you might, it might still be some time to assemble that, to put all the pieces together, but let your vision, trust your own vision. And know that you are well on your way to finding that, to, to realizing that purpose, to getting, getting to that place. And what you will find as well is when you become your own stability, that totally um, changes the landscape around you. Just like the beaver builds the dam and it creates ponds and water features that weren't there before that benefits all the woodland creatures and plants and animals. Um, so by seeing to your own power, claiming your own strength and power and stability, you're actually changing the landscape around you for the benefit of everyone else that encounters you, that lives in your sphere of reality, okay? Um, <coughs> the challenge for you, the third card, um, we have deer in reverse, <coughs> and deer is compassion, particularly self-compassion, right? You know, I'm going to tell the story. I know you've heard the story, but I'm going to tell it in case there's anyone else listening that needs to hear this. Um, but one day, Great Spirit was on the top of his mountain, and... He was so joyful and so pleased at creation, at the beauty of the world. He invited all the woodland creatures to come join him at the top of his mountain to celebrate life. The hitch was that there was a troll that lived at the base of his mountain and all of the creatures were afraid of this troll. All except Deer, who was so excited to go party with Great Spirit that she just comes bounding in, um, and the troll jumps out in front of her and roars in her face. Deer, rather than rearing up, you know, to fight or running away in fear, she, she sees troll, and rather than being afraid at the facade, at the projection that troll was sending, she saw through that to the heart of this being who was hurting, who was in pain, that was suffering. And so she just cocked her head, looked him in the eye and said, why are you so afraid? What did someone do to hurt you so badly? Why are you so angry? And the troll who survived on conflict and resistance Finding neither of those in deer just vanished. It's like deer by seeing through that facade, seeing that it's the namaste thing, right? The, the divine in me sees the divine in you. And by seeing him through those Bambi eyes, eyes of a child, the eyes of innocence and wonder, seeing this being who was in pain and suffering having compassion for him actually freed him from that struggle. And in doing so, through compassion, opened the doorway, the gateway for all the other creatures to come and approach and celebrate with great spirit. So 
rather than fighting the demons, rather than fighting for things to make sense, fighting for your rights, it's about looking at this, it's the shadow work you've been going through, looking into the shadow, looking at your shadow and seeing that the traumas and the pains that you're going through, the challenges and the struggles are not, that's part of the structure that is falling apart. Let me explain that a little better. Um, like I, I said this earlier, I don't remember which reading it was, but <laughs> the triggers, the traumas, the pain, that the issues that come up right now, they are not from a foreign source. They, that is an expression of a younger version of you who was not allowed to feel what they were feeling, to express what they were feeling, to be supported in, in the love of who they truly were. And so that younger part of you became steeped in that pain, in that, that struggle. And so when those voices come up, when those issues come up, and we start to fall into the self-doubt or the self-criticism, realizing that that is not our own voice, that is the voice of others from a younger age that didn't allow us to express ourselves fully. And so those, those trolls are coming up and roaring in order to be given the space to become that shelter for them where they can express what they weren't allowed to express before. To, and so it's about sitting with those feelings, allowing those feelings, giving that younger self of you permission to feel that way, because it's in giving that permission and allowing it that, that shifts it, that transmutes that and releases that feeling, you know. And up to that point, um, those traumas, and those thoughts and those self-criticisms were taken as part of the truth of who you were. It helped define who you thought you were. But again, those came from an outside source that was someone else's voice telling you to stay in your place, don't think too big, don't make waves or whatever it was. Um, and so we take that in as part of our defi definition of our identity when it has nothing to do with our true selves. Does that make sense? And so look at yourself with compassion. Look at yourself with those eyes of wonder, that love and that curiosity, and give yourself the benefit of the doubt to know that there's nothing wrong with you that you are already whole, that you are already a high vibrational being of light. And that you're in the process of remembering. Remembering, just like the opposite of dismember, of tearing apart. Remembering, putting back together putting the members, re-coalescing the members. So, be gentle with yourself. Know that you have done nothing wrong, no matter what your inner critic might say, no matter what your outer critics might say. And that that true self of you, the vision of your true self is what is drawing you forward. And 
make it, it will make all the pain and the struggle worthwhile. Like I said, it's not like, oh, that was fun. I'll do that again. It's like, like when I went through my decade of anxiety and, and panic attacks, <laughs> there is no way that I would ever want to relive that. That was a living hell. But at this point in my life, I am so grateful for that period I am grateful for the wisdom and the experience and the insights and the compassion it gave me. I wouldn't be who I am right now without having experienced that. So know that at some point you're going to be like, that was all worth it. That's why that happened. And things are going to work out better than you could even imagine. Okay? Wow. Good job. Good job. You're doing it. All right. Let me check and see. We only have one more person. Let me check and make sure that I haven't missed or forgotten anyone. Nope. It looks like one more person and that will bring us up to pretty close to eight o'clock. And that's what I'm realizing through these, these shamanathons. You're so welcome, Tammy. You're rocking it. You, you inspire me. You, watching you going through what you're going through, you inspire me and help me put things and shifts and changes in my life into perspective. So thank you. All right, Kiyosha, it's good to see you. It's good to have you back here again. Let's see what the cards say for you. Oh, what I was saying, I was, I've was i learned through doing this, this is the third time I've done one of these shamanathons, that two hours is about my limit. Okay. <coughs> Kiyosha, the three cards that came up for you are Ant, Boar in Reverse, and Mountain Lion. So, just like the last the reading for Tammy with, with Bat, when boar comes up, that's where I start. Because boar, when boar comes up, boar is usually a sign of some form of initiation. Um, boar is probably the fiercest animal on the planet <clears throat> and they're crazy they're they're insane they when they are threatened they they lose their minds and they start spinning and slashing with their tusks and their hooves and um they Even a tiger seeing a boar coming down the path will turn tail and go the other way because even a tiger doesn't want to mess with boar. And so because of that, around the globe and almost like in many, many indigenous cultures, <laughs> killing a wild boar is the, the rite of passage to adulthood. So... When boar comes up, it's like you are going through some form of initiation, some rite of passage, okay? Um, it's like, in my mind, the way I visualize it, <laughs> boar is kind of the embodiment of all our fears, our inner demons, right? 
And so we live in this, in this sphere, right? Our reality is this sphere around us. And the center is the comfort zone. And, and um, all around the perimeter of our bubble is fear. It's like a ring of fear. Um, not necessarily like terrifying, you know, blood curdling fear, but it's like on the other side of that is the unknown. Here be dragons, right? Um, and in reverse, I have a feeling that that perimeter, the fears that you're facing are not It's not, how do I put it? It's not necessarily a knuckle, like a white knuckle fear kind of thing, as much as a curiosity. There might be some hesitation to actually step beyond that point, but um, it doesn't feel like Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> my fire stopped. I didn't pay my fire bill this month. Um, so that I think because Boar is in reverse and you've got these other two cards right side up on either side of him, um, and again is patience. It's taking things step by step. It's the, the idea that Rome wasn't built in a day, you know, and you have to build, you have to build the basement and the foundation of the building before you can build the penthouse, right? And so it's like step by step, everything is falling into place. Um, Um, and it's like it's not it doesn't feel like as big of a struggle right it's like you're just walking the walk you're you're doing what doing what comes naturally it's like everything that you're doing, it's like, it just, it's kind of like, well, okay, this is, this is the obvious next step. And this is the obvious next step after that. And it's kind of like things are kind of regimented, like, like, it's just kind of like, oh, duh. Okay. Yep. There's the next step. And there's the next breadcrumb. And oh, there's the next breadcrumb. And it's like the step by step by step natural progression rather than it being a struggle trying to find your way. And oh my God, which way do I go? Um, it's like you see the purpose in it. You know, you may not be able to see, you know, the finished product, the finished building, but you know that by laying these bricks down, that something big is going to come from it. Does that make sense? And with mountain lion, excuse me, mountain lion is about leadership. And so you, a leader does not create followers. A leader creates more leaders because a leader, a leader is one who follows their heart. Their heart is their authority. And so it's like you're doing really well. It's like you're just following one foot in front of the other, being led by your heart. Um, like taking your power back, similar to what I was talking to Tammy about, um, like reclaiming your own power 
from those around you that you've given your power to. It's like you're ready to stand up and to roar, to, to set your territory and to defend that territory. Um, it reminds me of a soul retrieval I did recently for someone. <coughs> and I'm going to get teary eyed. Um, It's like, you're fine, like, okay, mountain lions are very territorial, right? Um, and they can defend their territory, right? Um, and what I'm picking up is that you're finally, how do I put this into words? You're finally realizing, I'm going to start crying. You're realizing your own worth. You're realizing your own value. And you're realizing there is something there worth defending. There is something there worth taking care of. Does that make sense? And so you are, you're experiencing this rite of passage, but it's not this overshadowing inner demons, gotta fight, fight, fight kind of thing. It's gentler than that. It's, it's just the na next natural progression. And that's not to say that there aren't inner demons that you're contending with and there's not challenges and there isn't, you know, there's a lack of fear or anything else. Those things might still be there. But you are handling it with so much grace and so much inner strength. Right? And the thing, like with, with Mountain Lion... Having the vision to see what is your boundaries where you stop and others start, um, knowing your territory, your integrity, your wholeness, being able to stand that ground is what allows you, besides being all teeth and claws, it allows you to be the soft, cuddly, roly-poly, purry kitten at the same time. It's the strength and the power that allows you to be vulnerable and soft. Does that make sense? But you are making huge strides. And you are exploring new territory. You're going Boldly going where no one has gone before. But at this point, it's more of coming from a place of curiosity. Yes, exactly, Kiosha. Um, that's exactly it. The fears are about losing what you have. But like I was talking to Tammy about, those outside things that seem to, that, that we cling to for safety or for identity is not truly who you are. And that who you are cannot be lost. That's, that's the illusion that you are shedding. That is the illusion that you are stepping into um, and through to the other side where you can clearly see the bigger picture. You're not just stuck in this tiny sphere of reality. You're leveling up to a bigger view of who you are. Um, and that playfulness of the kitten, being able to allow yourself to be soft, 
because you know that when you need it, that strength and that, that roar is there, right? That's beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah, and like you said, your guidance is to rest and receive. It's just, this isn't a race. This isn't getting to the finish line one step at a time. One step at a time. And it's, rather than fighting those inner demons, it's about inviting them in for tea. I actually do a comic like that one time. I, I was going, I was going through a breakup, but I kept finding myself checking. This was in the time of, of live journal. This was before Facebook, and I kept checking my ex's live journal to see what she was saying about me and being afraid of all these things that people might think about me, and and all this stuff. And at one, you know. I, in the in the comic page I drew, it was like I looked at her live journal one day, and what she said it felt like a like a sword through the heart, and then I realized that that was one of my you know, I my inner critic is going you shouldn't be looking at this you shouldn't be reading this, you're not doing yourself any good, and then I realized that no, I needed to do that to get that sword to realize that that was the de you know my inner demon reaching through the screen and stabbing me in the heart. And so rather than fighting it, it was like, oh, hi, hello, inner demon, come on in for, for tea. Would you like chamomile or Earl Grey? You know, and, and sitting with the demons and just allowing them to be there. And eventually they faded away because they had no substance other than what I gave them, the fear that I was feeding them to sustain them before was no longer there. And so rather than fighting those impulses, those fears, those inner demons, invite them in for tea. Know that ultimately there is nothing that can harm you. There is nothing, you are greater than anything you can fear. You are greater than anything that can challenge you. Exactly, the surrender feels scary. I know it does, but that's the gateway. And that's, that's why this is here, but that's why it's in reverse too, because it's not this big, scary monster. It's like, it's just a matter of looking into the shadow, looking, looking beyond the facade of that darkness. There, I, I had a friend one time that was talking about they had a dog and, and they had one of those invisible fences um, and so that was supposed to keep the dog in a certain territory within a certain boundary, right? But their dog realized that if he got a running start and jumped at the last moment, that the shock or whatever from that electric, that invisible fence only hurt for a moment and then he was home free, right? And so one thing you can do, this is something that I, that I stumbled upon when I was having my panic attacks and anxieties way back when. Um, whenever there was something, like whenever I had to go to the doctor or something, I'd be anxious and nervous, like, oh my God, what are they gonna find out what's wrong with me? Am I gonna, am I gonna die, you know? And so I would, sit and still myself and and I would feel forward in time to my future self on the other side of this bump in the road, whatever it happened to be. And 
I would feel his wholeness and his relief at being okay. And that way I could more, it didn't, it didn't wash away all of the fear or all of the nervousness, but it did help me have walk on more solid ground into whatever this challenge was because I could see and I could feel myself on the other side. I could feel the relief on the other side that everything was going to be okay. And so as you're surrendering into this, you know, um, when, when you're meditating or whatever, visualizing, connect to yourself, your future self, say like six months or a year from now. And connect with that self. Even, you know, talk to her. Ask what guidance she has for you. And feel her strength. Feel who you will become on the other side of these challenges. And then just by connecting to her, you just change your future. And you just anchored it in her reality so that she will continue to draw you forward to realize that particular future. Does that make sense? It's like all of these things are within you. It's just a mem of, uh, it's just a matter of realizing the power that already is there, okay? but you're doing it. And I don't know, I don't, did we talk about journaling before? I know we've talked before and I can't remember if you journaled or not, but I is like, that's coming up really strong to continue to journal, right? Tell your story. That's part of how you keep traction, right? that step by step by step and you keep going forward because you know where you came from and um, giving yourself you know we, we're on the leading edge of change right you're on the leading edge of this you're in the fray you're on the front lines but and so we we tend to lose perspective but when you can track how far you've come and realize how much more present, how much stronger, how much more empowered you are right now than you were, say, a month ago, six months ago, a year ago. And give yourself credit for how far you have come and realize that that is setting up that trajectory to your fulfillment. Oh, thank you, Kyosha. You are so welcome. You are so welcome. I am just, I am so glad to have met you and to be able to help you. You are a special soul yourself. And I hope you realize that. Phew. All right. Let's see. Check. Let me check my email again to make sure no one else has contributed. Okay, it looks like that is it. Perfect timing. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you everyone who has contributed to my Shamanathon. Um, keep watching my Facebook page to see when the next one will be. I haven't settled on a regular like, you know, fourth Wednesday or whatever yet. But um, I enjoy these and I, I, it feels like people are getting something out of it. And I'm getting something out of it. So this beautiful reciprocity of mutual benefit. Um, and I am so grateful for all of you for taking part, for contributing to my well-being and allowing me, you know, allowing me to share my gifts and to, I, whenever I do a reading, I learn something as well. So it's not just a one-way street. Um, I benefit as well because a lot of times I don't know that I know something until someone asks me about it 
or until it comes up in a reading and I put two things together that I never put together in my brain before, right? So I'm constantly learning and expand, expanding through doing this kind of work for others. So it's, it's just, it's so beautiful. It's so perfect. It's, it's just, I love that. So thank you again. Um, I will post this to my Facebook page and I will upload it to my uh, Perching Well Studios YouTube channel where you can subscribe and you can see all kinds of videos of readings and, and ceremonies and such. So give that a check out. Visit my website, perchingwolfstudios.net if you would like a full on reading or healing or teaching. I do personal one-on-one -on -one mentoring. I also have, um, next month I have, I'm, I'll be getting another um, cycle of my year long shamanic course. We spend once a month, get together and explore a different um, aspect of shamanism. And so you get to spend an entire year on a shamanic path. So um, that all that information is on my website and it's on my Facebook page, so check that out. Um, I hope this was beneficial for you. I hope you grew through this. And even if people were watching without contributing, I hope you got something out of it. It's all good. We're helping to walk each other home. So <coughs> thank you for watching. Thank you for spending some time with me. Um, and until I see you again, know that I love you, that I see you, and that I honor you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Have a wonderful week, a wonderful month. Till I see you again, go shining. All right. Bye, everybody.